Well, welcome aboard. On my little uh, brochure here, our event schedule, it says special guests arrive. Well, in my, in my way of thinking, you're all special. Uh, so much has gone into this play and into the presentation of the post-traumatic stress, the Ajax. It's, it's been a community effort, this part, this fourth presentation. So I want to thank all of you for being special and being here today uh, for this event. Uh, I do want to acknowledge a few people. I want to acknowledge Eugene over there. Eugene has been, we, this is our fourth one. He's been putting them on. Uh, I want to, Laura Fees, you'll, she's our executive officer of the Hornet. We have Keith Headley, who has been through here all four presentations that we're all we call ourselves the crew members of the Hornet. We don't call staff or volunteers. We're all crew members. So welcome aboard. This is our fourth presentation. Uh, we started out with uh, a, a series of videos, three crew members uh, detailing their experiences in uh, Vietnam and Eric Jones uh, on 9-11. And we went to another presentation that sort of talked about what PTS was. Uh, and we had another one that was a panel from, I mean, we had everyone. We had the FBI, uh, police, fire department, uh, educators, everything about the effects that they've seen of PTS on their families, the kids they teach, everyone. So this is not going away. I think it's going to get better. And this was the culmination of our plan. So Susan and Jeff Dunn, if they will, I'm, you all know them, they hooked us up to with the uh, Theater of War. And the Theater of War, Tom Hanks, a uh, number of actors that uh, present this, I'm sorry, it's Bill Murray, and a number of other actors do this. And so we contacted them because we thought this would be uh, apropos for our program. Well, they wanted uh, a, a huge sum of money. So Susan and Jeff took this by the ears and said, we'll do it. We'll find somebody to write the play, and away we go. It was supposed to be a little earlier, but because of Omicron, because of the viruses, uh, we decided to hold it here. And uh, as you see, this, uh, I mean, I've been excited. I watched the first one. I'm really excited for this. Uh, the next guy I'm going to introduce is Eric Jones. Eric and I got together about a year, year and a half ago, and we started talking about post-traumatic stress. And not only for the military and their families. This also applies to first responders. It applies to docs, nurses, medical professionals. It, it certainly applies to teachers, nurses, uh, admin in our schools. It applies to the children. It really is a community a problem that we're going to have, we have, and we're going to, I think it's going to get worse in the future unless something's done to it. So this is our effort to step into the void and pr provide not only a PTS resource center, but provide a place where people can come, not in a clinical setting, but they can come and listen to other stories. So with that, I'm going to introduce Mr. Eric Jones from Sea Valor. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mark. It's an honor to be here, and I just want to appreciate and acknowledge everybody that's helped make this possible. I think the work that we're doing is, is very important. People know the statistics, but I'd just like to share a text that I received. I know, Nick, you know about this, from Sarah. She's a, a therapist that works with Nick. And last month, she sent a text saying that in 30 days, she was, she was working with, there had been four military suicides. And that's just in their practice in Marin. And these numbers are unacceptable. And so that's in the military, but also first responders, law enforcement, other members of the community. This is something that's not going away. And we have this opportunity now to use this incredible ship and this incredible venue to help raise awareness and to help break the stigma. Because mental health, and especially post-traumatic stress and depression, is something that a lot of people, including myself, for a long time were ashamed or embarrassed to talk about. And we need to break that down, because the numbers bear it out that this is not, this is not a problem that's going away. And so this is our, our fourth 
um, effort in this, and there's a lot of exciting things that are going to start happening in the next few months. We've, we've been learning and exploring and experimenting and talking, and we're going to use this venue to help break the stigma, to help make it acceptable and normal to talk about mental health as if it were a, a physical ailment like cancer or a broken arm or a broken leg, because it's really no different. And the fact that we're losing so many people, I'm 46 years old and I've known, it was seven when I started Sea Valor, and several months ago a firefighter in Emeryville by the name of Eric Michaels took his own life and widowed his wife and three children because of his post-traumatic stress from his job, his time on the job as a firefighter. So now it's eight people that I've, I've known in 46 years that have taken their own life from post-traumatic stress. And I'm, I'm sure many of you have uh, similar stories. I know Captain Emerson has. And you know we just need to really work together as a community to figure out what ways we can do. We're not going to help save everybody. And that's not necessarily the goal. But if we can help improve people's quality of life and make them feel that they can talk about things, and there are resources and there's help, you know, they, whether it's therapy or activities or sailing or becoming a, a volunteer a crew member here on the Hornet. There are things that people can do that instead of focusing on their past trauma, they're looking forward in ways that can, can help improve their lives. And I think if we all work together, we're gonna to help get these numbers down in our community. So thank you for allowing us to be a part of this. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I, I want to acknowledge uh, Nick Watkins, he's a therapist with Joel Rabot, Melitis and Associates, right there. Thank you for showing. If you want to know more about Nick, and I did, uh, right on the second page, there's a bio. So thank you very much for being here. I want to acknowledge Andy Turkington, Andy, the Mental Health uh, Nurse Education, Unitech College, and Andy is also in here. So. Right now, we're really, uh, it was an honor and a pleasure to have uh, a, a doctor, a physician from the VA that works with post-traumatic stress students at the VA to speak to us. And I think she has some unique uh, insights. So I want to introduce Dr. Maheen Masouf Adamson. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad to be here, and I want to thank um, Susan especially because I just moved in this area in October, and I'm seeing familiar faces here already. So this community does work around here, doesn't it? And also, I didn't um, fall on the stage because I haven't worn heels for a long time. So that's definitely a plus. So. Um, I'm going to tell you my experiences as a clinical research scientist, and I'm currently a director for rehabilitation services at the VA Palo Alto, and I'm also clinical associate professor of neurosurgery at Stanford University. And I've been working in neuroscience and trying to apply research in neuroscience to veterans who have had a traumatic brain injury. And under traumatic brain injury, you get a lot of patients with a lot of PTS and depression. And you get them from all conflicts. So you're talking about uh, OEF, OIF, and I'm not gonna break that down because I think everyone knows what that is. Um, Vietnam War, Gulf War, and it is something that I've been seeing for 15 years. But I'm originally from Karachi, Pakistan. I came here when I was 19. And I started studying all about the brain and getting my PhD and whatever. But I'd never really interacted with a PTSD veteran. So around 2010, as a researcher, I would only look at their MRIs and look at their behavior, and I'd look at, you know, look at them as a number. I didn't look at them as a patient. I was a researcher. I didn't need to. De-identified data is always good for research. But in 2010, I actually met somebody who was a veteran and who had PTSD. And I was going through his records, and I was looking through his data, and I was like, well, you got a traumatic brain injury, and you didn't report it? And he just looked at me, and he's like, I was on the base. And I'm like, so what does that mean? You fell really hard, but you didn't report it. And he goes, yeah, because they would have taken my weapon away. I didn't want to report it. And then they wouldn't have believed me. And I said, what do you mean they won't have believed you? Here I am, a scientist, completely logical. Like, of course they should have believed you. Completely clueless. And he's like, well, because they would have said that it's in my head, and it doesn't mean anything. 
And I'm like, it is in your head. It's in the amygdala, in the temporal lobe. I can show it to you. So to me, that phrase that it's all in your head actually means a lot. You just t turn it over. Because you can literally see the effects of post-traumatic stress in the brain. We weren't able to earlier, 20 years ago, because we didn't have the technology. But now we're able to look at the structure of the brain, and not just simple gray and white matter. I, if I was allowed to do a much bigger talk and be way more fancy, I can show you amazing pictures from my own studies, beautiful tracks of the brain, these white matter tracks that are completely destroyed because you've been in traumatic brain injury and you have PTS. And when you have something like the brain destroyed, what it does is that it changes your function. It changes your behavior. I'm a very biased neuroscientist. I don't think there's any other organ in the brain that is as fascinating as, the, as uh, and any other organ in the body that's as fascinating as the brain. You do anything to the heart, it doesn't affect the way you think. It doesn't affect the way you dream. You do anything to the brain, it will change your life. When I, when I was, um, when I would watch movies, and I don't have not had the experiences of a traumatic brain injury, but I don't like watching movies with conflict. I remember uh, watching Steven uh, Spielberg's, um, the movie that was about, uh, what was, Saving Private Ryan. And I, I was really upset at Steven Spielberg, because what he did even if you closed your eyes in the first scene, you could literally imagine it because he made sound under the water of the bullets. So you could imagine it in your head. So that's what PTS is really. It's re-experiencing the memory, using all of the five senses to recover those memories. So if the sound can trigger it, the smell can trigger it, a word can trigger it, all of it comes together. It also allows you to, it's not just taking it in and re-experiencing the memory, it also allows you to act it out. And when you act it out, you either are aggressive, you're avoidant, or you are incredibly negative. And all these things can result into the most deleterious outcome would be a suicide. But it also raises Things like unemployment, divorce rates, not being able to keep up a job, depression, anxiety. And you can just, you, other than the fact that yes, it's a lot on the human factor, you're also actually seeing the healthcare dollars roll up. All of this is affecting it. We have such an amazing techno technological world right now. Everyone is connected, everyone is doing wonderful things with, with the internet. And at the same time, we, I feel, are not using it to our maximum capacity to deliver care to our veterans and to people who've had PTSD, PTS. So I think it's really, to us, it is up to us, especially we live in the Silicon Valley, that we need to harbor all of the things that we've learned in, technologic, in, in, in technological world that we live in and help those that have this um, post-traumatic stress. So that's one of the most things that I have kind of told you about my journey is where I started as a research scientist and where I think we have come. Statistics are easy to talk about because everybody knows what they are, but it is kind of important that six out of every 100 people overall, whether or not you're a veteran, will have some kind of a PTS experience in their life. It's also very important to know that eight out of every 100 women develop PTS sometime in their life, compared to about four of every men. So I always point out the difference in gender in this issue. Because the stimulus women receive from the environment is very different than what men receive. Just for numbers, in OEF and OIF, 11 or 20 out of every 100 veterans suffered from PTS. In Gulf War, 12 out of every 100 suffered from PTS. In Vietnam War, 15 out of 100 uh, veterans suffered PTS. So the numbers have been 
rising. The numbers have, you know, always. But as Vietnam War was a long time ago in our, in our so things science has changed a lot. Our reporting has changed a lot. We actually have created questionnaires in our clinics where we actually work with aids and try to ask the right questions. If I ask you, have you had a traumatic brain injury? You're like, no, I haven't. I haven't had a traumatic brain injury. And I ask you, well, have you ever fallen on the ground when you were like around 10 or 11? Oh, yeah. So it's about asking questions. Did someone touch you inappropriately in the military? No. Were you, you know, just anything that kind of, it's not about, it's about creating a standardized questionnaire, a standardized self-report mechanism, even with, uh, with or without a clinician, that helps get the answer out. And I think that's really, really crucial right now because people are afraid to report. They're afraid to talk. Maybe some people are better at Zoom. Maybe some people are better in person. Maybe some people are better at answering questions on a survey that is delivered to them through a medium like TikTok. However it is, we have to get to, to those people who need our help. So, and remember, these, these, if they have PTS, they're going to avoid you, right? So you know these symptoms. So you know that, ah, this person, I mean, other than the fact that they'll be like, ah, stop stalking me. But this is the important part, is that if you already know that they have had an incidence, then we have to reach out to them. So those are some of the things that are important. The other important thing is <laughs> most, most PTS patients or traumatic brain injury patients, when they go to the clinic, they're given medication. Clinical, just, you know, here's Zoloft, here's Prozac, you know, you're done. That's not your only alternative, right? You have a lot of different therapies available to you. I myself do brain stimulation, which is non-invasive, and there's uh, some flyers in the back. If you're interested, you can take a look at it. But it's uh, something that's FDA approved for uh, major depressive disorder, and we apply it for pain, we apply it for PTS, we apply it for depression. So that's one way to take care of some of the symptoms that you have. And it's not 100%, obviously, and there's some people respond to it and some people don't. There's cognitive behavioral therapy. There's also eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which is called EMDR. Some people may have heard of it. There's also prolonged exposure therapy, which is you actually exposed yourself to the stimulus that made you cringe from it. You actually exposed yourself from, to it so that you learn to deal with it. Um, there's also technical in, uh, interventions, and one of them that's really big right now is virtual reality and augmented reality. So you can go through exposure. In fact, the guy who created Oculus, I met him 15 years ago at USC. He was a research assistant in one of my mentor's labs. And his biggest project that he did was called Virtual Iraq, in which they basically exposed all the people who were exposed military who were about to be sent uh, to the conflict. They exposed them to the kind of environment they were going to be in through virtual reality. This is 15 years ago. And here he is, CEO of you know, he made Oculus and sold it and made a lot of money. So, Virtual reality is a very big way to deal with it. And last thing I wanted to just say was, remember, everyone has different ways of dealing with their stress. And their brain is working very differently from me or from anyone else. So there's differences with your genetic history. There's differences with whether you're a woman or, or, or a man. There's differences with where you are living, because income status does make a difference. What is available to you, what access you have to the health care, all these factors really do matter. Whether you have 5G or not, whether you can use a virtual reality, I mean, these are issues that we have to think about. So not, there's no one, one causality. Like, one thing doesn't you know, create another thing. It's all these mixture of factors. And you have to get a group of people to address these factors. And you have to recognize all the different symptoms that are part of it. We know that women experience very different PTS than men. They experience very different outcomes of traumatic brain injury than men. In data that I have in my own lab, women are more educated than men, but they're still less employed than men. 
they have more psychiatric issues, they have more cognitive issues, and they have more vertigo issues. And this goes back to the sailing question we were talking about. Women have more vertigo after a traumatic experience, especially if it's physical. Why is that? Biological explanation is our neck is thinner. If you get hit on the head, it's gonna move back farther. And coming back, it just doesn't come back as fast in recovery as it does in men. So these are small things that are actually make a big impact as you get older. So I hope that I kind of gave you a lot of snippets and a lot of different things that can affect, because everybody knows what PTS is, especially in this environment. Everyone knows what the impact of it is. But I think learning about the nuances and learning about what's out there and how to bring people together to help those in need. I, I, you know, I hate the phrase, you do you. I was just talking about it with my family on the way here. Because I think the best way to do you is to help others. So thank you very, very much. Thank you, Dr. Adamson. That was wonderful. Um, next, I want to introduce Jeff and Susan Dunn, the one that started the ball rolling. And uh, this is uh, the, the, on the Hornet, we, we have crew members, we have people that step up, and they really stepped up. So we consider them crew members of the Hornet. Susan and Jeff. I think I need a stool. Can you, I think you can see me. First of all, I want, I th I want to thank the Hornet for their amazing community outreach. And also, the East Bay Play Readers who are in the audience today, thank you for coming. So how did this all begin? And why are we here to watch a Greek play today? When I first read that the Hornet was launching a PTS program, I immediately thought of the ancient Greeks because the Greeks used theater as therapy to help heal their citizens. And the Greek theater grew out of long periods of war, both the triumphant wars between the Greek city-states and Persia, and later the devastating wars between Athens and Sparta. The community addressed the trauma from these events together in public in their forum, and most especially in their theater. Are you ready? I'd like you to close your eyes and hear that hum over there in the background? That is a secret time machine. It is rolling us back in time, 500 years, 1,000 years, 1,500 years, 2,000 years, 2,500 years. You are now in a Greek amphitheater. You are surrounded by hundreds, hundreds of your fellow citizens with seats going up the hill behind you, going down below, encompassing the stage. You're not only seeing a play in their actors, but you're sharing the feelings of your fellow citizens. And that is the point of the play. Let's imagine that we are Greeks watching Ajax in the theater. Well, we plan on having the Alameda players and Jeff and Susan back, uh, sh hopefully in the next two or three months. Uh, we're going to run the uh, video, the Ajax video. But before I do that, uh, the this play uh, and the post-traumatic stress series was brought to you by the Marathon Petroleum Corporation. They have been a longtime supporter of the Hornets community outreach. Uh, we, I can't count how many kids went through the program as a result of their contributions, 
and also this series. So enjoy it, and then we'll be followed by a panel. Thank you. Odysseus, crafty one, how I'm used to seeing you on the battlefield. Athena, my goddess. Let me help you understand what's going on. Athena, I have been looking for Ajax. Rumors are scattered about the camp that he has lost his mind and took violence out on our troops, on the Greeks. I was fetched to discover the truth and the circumstances. They say Ajax committed an infamous deed. That very night are captured flocks and herds have been stolen, scattered, slaughtered. Our spoils of war that we need to feed the troops. It is true. And I've come to help you fathom what this Midas of Greek warriors has done. His grief and anger about the armor of the slain Achilles drove him to this. As you know, this famous armor was to be given to the greatest remaining Greek warrior. Ajax felt he was the most deserving of the prize, even though the generals Agamemnon and his brother Menelaus awarded it to you instead. Ajax was enraged by this dishonor. Yes, I am not surprised by his anger, but why did he take it out on our herd? Actually, he wanted to kill you and the generals. What? Was this slaughter planned against the Greek leaders, against his own people then? Planned and would have been carried out. As he was about to strike, I swooped down and overcame his mind with blind fantasies and steered him from the camp, instead to the flocks and herds in the field. Ajax, advance before your palace gate. My goddess! No, don't call him. He was and is my valiant rival. His size and brute strength are hardly a match for my cunning and silver tongue. Don't worry. Ajax won't recognize you. He's too deep in his delusion. Stand still and keep your place without a word. Silence! At your command. But I wish I were far away from his wrath. Goddess, hide me. Ajax, again I summon you. Hail, offspring of the highest, Athena, goddess. Hail, I kneel to you. You have served and guided me well tonight. A fair intention, but tell me, have you plunged your sword deep into Greek blood? I boast that I have. Have the generals felt your victorious might? They have. No more will they overlook me. I take it then, those generals are dead. Aye, now they are dead. See if they can arise from Hades and rob me of my arms. Good. Next, inform us of Odysseus. How is his fortune? Have you let him go? That accursed fox? If you mean Odysseus, he sits inside the tent, dear lady. And, to my joy, he is bound. For I mean for him not to die just yet. What fine advantage would you next achieve? How will you execute it? First, tie him to a pillar of my hall. Poor wretch! What torment will you wreak on him? I'll stain his back with whipping till he die. Nay, nay! It's too much! Poor coward! Not the bloody whip! Athena, in everything else, 
have your way, but no one shall wrest Odysseus from this doom. Well, since you are determined on the deed, spare none of your intent. Indulge your hand. I must go, but you, I charge you, let your aid to me be ever more valiant as it is today. Do you see the madman and his fall? What soldier other than Ajax is more prudent and valiant on the field? But look now how he has fallen. Yes, I know of none braver and bolder, but though he hates me sore, now pity him, poor mortal. I cannot think of his misfortune without pondering my own as well. Then, Odysseus, be warned by what you see. Son of Telamon, we call out to you who have proudly led the Salaminians to war against our foe, the Trojans. But like the changing weather, the gods have moved the compass of your fate from hero to destroyer. All our hearts are afraid and sighing. Our souls shrink like a dove's soft eye. Our provisions, taken from the Trojans by the sweat of our spearmen, are now lost to slaughter? Reports against your life and honor have been spread around the camp by that shrewd Odysseus. And his tales gain many an ear. Each man glories more than the last to put your character to shade. Ajax, put an end to these rumors. Confront the lies of Odysseus and those generals, Agamemnon and Menelaus, with your side of the story. Come out of your tent and stand up to Odysseus. Make this right. Soldiers and sailors of the fleet of Ajax, I need your help now, as I know you care for him. Oh, support that dread, grand, and rugged Ajax we know. Our hero is stricken now in a troubling storm. His glory, once a shining beacon, now droops low. What turned his fate and marred his honor, which was so solid this morning? I don't know how to say it. Madness seized our lord in the night and turned his mind to ravages. See, the horrid victims piled beneath that canopy? They were torn by his red hands and dyed in their blood. This is the essence of his torment. He, in his rage, had a rapture of delight, thinking he had overwhelmed his enemies. But that delight has sickened to a counterblast of sorrow and remorse that shakes the soul and leaves us distraught. Oh, your words move me. A heavenly stroke has fallen. Though it's a nightmare that won't go away. And his mind cleared and he saw what he had done. Not to men, but to beasts. And he let out a howl that pierced my soul. He shook his fist. He smote his brow, howling again. He tumbled down and sprawled him in the wreck of woolly carnage he had made. And now, all quietly, he broods, overpowered, and there's no doubt in his mind he intends a new harm. I fear it in the words without which burst and groaned from him. Tecmessa, you cherished wife to Ajax and mother of his son, we shudder at your story. I, 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 I am done. Oh, am my done. friends. Oh, my friends. Please, enter. Sympathy of countrymen may be balm to his soul. I, I. Is this the madness I hear? Boy, boy, where is my boy? He cries for Eurysache, his dear son. Where are you? My heart. 
To Sarai call! He calls for his brother. His wits seem to have returned. Perhaps the sight of us, his fellow mates, may assuage him. Here, and do what you can. Ajax! Ajax! Oh, my dear comrades of the sea and of the field, your truth and love stand forth. I am alone, submerged in my woe. Look you upon the gory sea of fur and horns, their agony flowing, flowing all around me. Tecmessa, you are all too true. This scene of slaughter burns my eyes. Mental chaos. Reason's lamp has gone out. Soldiers, sailors, I call upon your aid. Come, murder me with the flock. I am deserving of their fate. Oh, temper your words, Ajax. Pouring crime on crime will only make it worse. You see before you one who was the leader of the brave and the bold, whom none could best in the field. Well, no more. Beasts and herdsmen that, through no harm for me, have fallen by this, my deranged arm. I'm now a laughing stock of the Greeks, a mockery of my might. Ajax, my lord, I beg you, speak not so. Tecmessa, away, wife, be gone, and trouble me not. Oh, oh! Now, now, be softened, Ajax. Bear a steadier mind and share this burden with your wife who cares for you. Too late now. I am the helpless plaything of the gods. They once spread my fame and honor, and as I honored those gods in their temples, so did I expect their powers to sustain me. Heaven-cursed hand! that filled my mind with darkness, my eyes blotted from the truth. I attacked a horned and bleating band of beasts instead of the ruffians who dishonored me so lately. Agamemnon, Menelaus, and Odysseus. They have escaped my vengeance, Odysseus especially. He who stole my place of honor not stole with deeds and might, but with tricks and clever words. Here in my heart, great Zeus, if I could just destroy this plague of generals, then I could die a happy man, a man avenged. What? You are looking to your own death? Don't say it. What would that do to your wife? The mother of your son? How would we live? You must think of us, Ajax. Darkness! Darkness! My only light! Oh, the nether gloom to me is brighter than morning in my eyes. Take me to dwell with spirits of the underworld. Take me to darkness. Who can help me? Not the gods. Not men. And... Where can I fly to get away? All here is ruin. This mad deed shames me forevermore. And the vengeance of the Greeks is at my door. Yea, all the Greek host is ready at command to slay me over and over. Alas! Alas! to hear this from one so good and true. You, foaming sea, and you, deep groves that crown the cliffs and caves along the shore, too long you have confined me about the walls of Troy. Ten years. And for what? To avenge the rape of Helen? Merely a woman? And soothe the pride of those Generals, but no more now. I'll breathe no more. Let my history pass, as it will for all men. The wise in heart may someday learn my story, 
Let Xanthus, the nearby river god, know I am one man, one hero. That god shall never see again. Ajax, the highest in warlike worth of all the Greeks before the towers of Troy. Now that hero is shorn of all his deeds and pride. He who was high is now low. Ajax, friend and comrade, what can I do to swerve you from these thoughts? Aye! <laughs> Call me Aye now! Nevermore, Ajax! If my mind had held and stayed its course, the honor that I won before the walls of Troy would have held today. But Athena, with baneful eye, hurled upon my soul a frenzied plague that stained my hands with the blood of all these dumb victims. Because of the gods, and not me, my strong arms were thwarted and shamed by madness. And so the weakling generals still live. What remains of my fate? Shall I advance before the Trojan battlements, and there in single conflict at last die upon Trojan spears? No. I can't do that. It will make the generals glad of heart. Shall I, crossing the Aegean and sailing home, leave these generals and their fleet forlorn? But how shall I dare to look at my father's eye, where he saw a hero off to war? What dishonored warrior would return to his heart? I must face it now. When there is no way out of misery, best to end it. Why should extra hours prolong a misspent life? Honor in life or honor in the grave best befit the noble heart. You hear my will. Oh, my great master, the heaviest of all woe goes to those whose lives are crushed by death too soon. Since the hour that made us one together, so now I live for you. I breathe for you. By the sacred fire of home and by the sweetness of the night, for when you're captive, I became your bride. Don't leave me exposed to the unworthy touch and cruel taunting of your enemies. For if you die and leave us, then I shall be borne off by Greek violence. And with your boy, eat from that day the bread of slavery. You are my stay, my home, my love. Think of your family's undoing. Bring me my boy, that I may see his face. Eurysikes, your father calls you, child. Bring him forth. My trusty warriors, my mates at sea, Bear to Teucer this clear commandment, that he take this boy home to Salamis and make him known to his grandparents. Let this child take care of them in their old age and bring joy to their waning days. And for my armor, let that not fall to those false umpires, Agamemnon and Menelaus, or to him who ruined me, the scoundrel Odysseus, but you, Eurysikes, you are named for my unpierceable shield. Hold it now with its seven-hided buckler and well-stitched thong. Grasp it firmly and wield it mightily. The rest of my armor shall lie where I am buried. Tecmessa, take Eurysikes now, quickly, and close the flap. <laughs> no tears, Tecmessa. What? Weep before the tent? How piteous are women. Make fast and strong, I say. Oh, how my heart sinks. Oh, by your child, by heaven, I pray you on my knees, forsake us not. You trouble me, wife. Don't you know that the gods have abandoned me? Hush! Speak not so! 
know. Speak you to those that hear. Will you not hear me? This is hard enough. I must be fast and strong. Can you not be still? Oh, my fears. My fears. Please listen to me, Ajax. Men, come help me. Shut me in, I say. I must be alone with her. The strongest will, even mine, is slayed by the whims of time. My recent will of iron now droops, weakened by this woman, whom I must leave with her child, soon to be orphan. It dulls me with pity and grief. I will go to the baths and meadows near the cliff, purge there my dark pollution, and try to appease Athena's heavy anger. I will find a place no man has trod. There I will bury this sword, this weapon of hate. May night and Hades keep it there below the ground, for from that first hour my hand received Hector's sword, he the deadliest of my foes. Nothing from the Greeks has turned out well for me. From now on, I'll bow to the commands of the gods and give homage to the generals. Those who rule must be obeyed, for to authority I must yield all things most dread and mighty. Sleep that masters us all keeps life on course, yet soon enough sleep itself loosens the bond of life. And so I learn temperance, for I now know to only hate our foes so far, for the future may bring us to love them. And in reverse, we do a friend's service, only knowing he may prove to be our foe in a quick turn. And now, Tecmessa, be my help and pray to the gods that they fulfill all these things as my heart desires. Comrades, join her here, honoring my wishes, and when Teucer, my brother, comes, ask him to guard and protect my rights, my family, my wife and son, and to shield them from any slanders or harms. For now, I must fulfill my tasks, and soon enough, Happily, you shall hear that despite this current misery, it all goes well for me. But I hear calling. Where's Ajax? I I I've left the battlefield now to help my brother who stirred the Greek army and generals to a frenzy. I come now with a critical message, but where is Ajax to receive my word? I need to tell it straight to him. He's not in his tent, but has gone forth. Oh. He's calm, with plans to redress this slaughter. His mind is much altered. Oh, I'm too late. The caucus, the seer is right. My brother is dead. Too, sir, am I undone? Oh, no, what is it? Caucus says Ajax must not leave his tent today. He must be confined while the sun controls the hours. He'll be in danger oh. from the gods. Oh, friends, a desolating blow is falling. Friends, search him out with me along the paths, the pathways and shore, so we can find Ajax before he is the captive of dire fate and speeds to his death. I am ready. Come, I can cover the paths and fields. Let us leave. Uh, 
I stand here prepared and think how to set the blade for my final act. This sword, this gift of Hector, whom of all men I hated most with heart and eyes, this sword is now sharpened and set in hostile Trojan soil, planted by my care and set firm to give me the swift and friendly death. Fine instrument, do your job. And now I appeal to Zeus with my last requests. Let Teucer hear the ill news of my death and know that only he may lift my body from my bleeding sword. Let him find me first and make swift burial to protect me from my enemies, the dogs and the elements. And I ask that when I have cleft a sudden passage to my heart, that Hermes, in one swift bound, float me to painless slumber. Next, I call on those avenging furies to understand how I am wronged. See how my life is ruined and by whom. Come and feast and infect on Greek flesh. Spare none. Rage through the camp. Lastly, you, sun in the sky, when you reach my fatherland of Salamis, report my fall and this my fatal end to my dear father and mother. Soften their woe. But I waste time with these idle moans. See to it, Ajax, and dispatch. O oh, death, O oh, death, now come and welcome, yet with you hereafter. I shall find close communion where I go. Now and no more forever, O oh fair light, O oh sacred fields of Salamis, my home. And you, her people whom I love, O oh rivers, brooks, fountains, here, yea, even the Trojan plain, I now invoke. Farewell. This one last word from Ajax peals to you. Henceforth, my speech will be with souls below. I... Where could Ajax have gone? We have tramped all the westward arm of the bay. But soft now. I, I hear a cry. Oh no! Your fears take shape. It's Tecmessa. I hear her overcome with grief. Oh, my friends, I am spoiled, lost, ruined, overthrown. See here where our Ajax lies and already has died. Teucer and I found him. He fell on his sword buried in the ground. My heart is rent. Oh, woe for my fault, my loss. Ajax, you have fallen in blood alone with no comrade beside you and not a friend to cross or guard you. I am deaf, senseless as a stone. We have covered him with his mantle, since no heart that loved him could bear to endure the view. Ajax, dear brother, comfort of mine eye, you have then embraced Hector's sword to be your end. We weep, he lives no more. His child without a father. Heck, Master, uh, uh, go with haste. Bring Eurysikis here and protect him from any who would do him harm. Hurry to it. The Greek host will soon enough appear to mock our fallen Ajax. Leave it cast out on the sand where the dogs will find him. How gratitude does disappear when men are dead. He will bury the traitor Ajax in spite of our commands. So you will take his side against mine? 
Yea, no, I hated him, while hate against him was popular. Remember what he was to you, Odysseus. A noisome enemy, yes, but his life was great. And you will honor such a pestilent corpse? Hatred can give way to magnanimity. With stupid fools, we shall be known as weaklings through your counsel. Not so, but righteous in all Grecian eyes. You bid me then allow the burial of this dead man. I urge you to the course. I shall follow myself. It will be your doing then, not owned by me. If you own it or not, the kindness is the same. Do what you will. Now ply your busy cares above him. Come and labor for the man. Nobler none since time began was Ajax while his life blood ran. Oft we know not till we see so weak is human prophecy. Beware to judge, don't judge, don't tempt the three, the three called fate who rule by blunt decree. Still, nobler none since time began was Ajax while his life blood ran. <laughs>